Looking for a fun, new, exciting way to play fantasy sports? Make sure to check out FanDuel. Use code BENGAL at sign up for a $20 deposit bonus when you enter that code. It is the best and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. I know I play fantasy football for the daily fantasy sports all the time. I can't really handle the grind of the season. So this is just the best way and the most fun way for me to play any type of fantasy sports. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. And FanDuel is just absolutely the best. So make sure to use code BENGAL at sign up. $20 deposit bonus. And also, if you guys want to check out my second and third channels for other videos and games you might see with some of your other favorite YouTubers that I collab with. Make sure you check that out. Both links are in the description. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today with some NFL videos. I know you guys have really enjoyed these on the channel in the past when I've done them, so we're doing it again. Of course, as always, let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. But today, we're going to be discussing the top five potential trade locations for Le'Veon Bell. I wanted to do this video for a while, and there was speculation that Le'Veon Bell would come back and rejoin the Pittsburgh Steelers during the bye week, yet James Conner continues to perform while Le'Veon Bell continues to stay away from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And now, by the time you're watching this video, Le'Veon Bell could either A, have already been traded, or B, return to the team, or even C, do nothing at all. But... Bottom line is we're quickly approaching the NFL trade deadline. And Le'Veon Bell very well could be changing teams, changing roles with the addition of James Conner to the Pittsburgh Steelers playing as well as he has in the absence of Le'Veon Bell. I think Le'Veon maybe wanted James Conner to come in and not perform and the Pittsburgh Steelers would see how much they actually needed him. But they haven't really needed him. Sure, their offensive production has been down. It's been harder to get the ball to Antonio Brown. But Le'Veon Bell is still a top five running back in the NFL very easily. I don't think anyone would argue with that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the first team. And that first team is going to be the Green Bay Packers. I think really what this comes down to is the Packers have a few picks stockpiled, including two first round picks. Now, would I trade a first round pick for Le'Veon Bell from the Green Bay Packers? Probably not. Probably not. But... Think about all the ways that Le'Veon Bell would help this already stellar Green Bay Packers offense excel even more because we all know the greatness of Aaron Rodgers, but look at the talent that he has on the team. There isn't much. Devontae Adams is probably a top 15, top 20 wide receiver at the worst, but then after that, it gets a lot worse. Jimmy Graham is certainly not what he used to be. Out of the backfield, you really don't have much going on. I know Aaron Jones is okay, and Jamal Williams is okay. Overall, their running back group is not strong. Their offensive weapon group, not strong. Le'Veon Bell gives you so many more options out of the backfield. And again, the Packers do have those two first-round picks. They could easily give up one if they wanted to for a Le'Veon Bell to increase their chances to go to the playoffs. It's going to be a close race. The Bears have performed well so far in the AFC North. Actually, NFC North, my bad. And the Vikings are a talented team. We've seen what they can do last year. But Aaron Rodgers back and healthy. The Packers are going to compete. This could take their offense to the next level. I like Le'Veon Bell to the Packers. The Packers probably wouldn't want to go out and make a huge trade for running back like this, giving up a lot of value, but it definitely would help them out a lot, so I could see it happening. Next up, we have the Oakland Raiders. Now, the Oakland Raiders have struggled this year. It's no secret under John Gruden, as he has shown that he doesn't want to pay his top players. He wants to build his own team, basically starting from scratch and if he doesn't have to start from scratch he's gonna make sure he starts from scratch by trading away some of the best players on the team example Khalil Mack he wants to trade Amari Cooper there will be videos on the channel coming out later with Amari Cooper and now Carl Joseph who he wants to trade apparently so be sure to subscribe for that but the Raiders could use Le'Veon Bell they've struggled offensively a lot and I think a lot of that's on Derek Carr but a lot of that might be because Marshawn Lynch is a one-dimensional running back. And in today's NFL, where you need those multi-dimensional running backs to really perform, look at some of the best teams, how they utilize running backs. This is what the NFL demands nowadays. Not all the time, but in a lot of cases, it definitely helps to have a multi-dimensional running back like Le'Veon Bell. This could open up the Raiders' offense. It could help them perform in year one. Not sure what Gruden wants to do, but maybe he's like, hey, I'm taking a lot of heat for the way I've been running this team. Maybe I go out and trade for a superstar. I get, you know, some of these hating fans off my back. And they have good reason to be hating on him right now. I totally understand that. 
but maybe he thinks, hey, let me go out and make a superstar trade like I traded away Khalil Mack, and this will help out our team, help us win. I don't know. Could be. Next up, the Indianapolis Colts. Their running back room is not great, to say the least. I know that Naheem Hines has looked okay, and Marlon Mack in the past has looked okay. They don't really have running backs. No one near the level of Le'Veon Bell. And Lord knows Andrew Luck needs some help. Now, that help certainly starts on the offensive line. I'm not saying it doesn't. But the Colts have a lot of money. A lot of money. You could trade for Le'Veon Bell, use some of that money in the offseason to recruit an entire free agent class of offensive linemen and say, hey, you can play in front of one of the league's best quarterbacks, Andrew Luck. You can play in front of one of the league's best quarter, or excuse me, running backs, Le'Veon Bell. There is a good wide receiver there in T.Y. Hilton. Eric Ebron's played well. Jack Doyle's a decent option. This is not a terrible Indianapolis Colts offense. With Le'Veon Bell, they would be even better. It's a bad team right now. I think Le'Veon Bell could do a lot to make them better for next year because honestly this year, I think the Colts are out of it. But this is definitely a trade for and re-sign to a massive, massive extension kind of thing with Le'Veon Bell. Number two is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers currently competing in the NFC South, and they really are. They got out to a very hot start and then have slowed down a little bit, but they haven't exactly been terrible with the return of Jameis Winston. He had a good game this past week in terms of, you know, yardage and getting back into the flow of things. They are 2-3, and three, but then again, the Falcons are 2-4 and four in the NFC South. The Saints are 4-1. and one. They're definitely going to win the division. The Panthers are 3-2. and two. They're certainly not out of contention, but the Buccaneers with just... Three losses, you can still lose three times and easily make the playoffs a 10-6, and six, I'd say. So the Buccaneers certainly are not out of it. Maybe bringing in a fantastic running back like Le'Veon Bell would really, really increase your chance to make the playoffs. I could really see that happening. Their backfield right now is not good. They have Peyton Barber, who they've utilized a lot. Peyton Barber is not a good running back. I'm sorry, Peyton Barber. I know you're not watching this, but if you somehow find yourself across this, get better. I don't know what to tell you. Um, And I know it's not easy to play running back. Lord knows I wouldn't perform. You know what? I might perform somewhere near your level. And Jaquiz Rogers, he's always been a backup to third string running back at best. And then Rojo, Ronald Jones, you've been a healthy scratch seemingly every week. And then last week or two weeks ago, you finally get some touches. You perform okay, not that good. And then last week, you maybe get one touch, I think, the entire game. So you could easily bring in a running back here. I don't think you're going to find anyone that's like, oh, no, Peyton Barber has great potential. Rojo, I think, does have good potential, but he's nowhere near the level of Le'Veon Bell. And it's hard to say that any running back that comes in the league would be able to perform at the level of Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell's an extremely talented player. He might transform this Bucks offense. They've performed well with Fitzmagic. You have Mike Evans, bona fide star number one. You have Deshaun Jackson, big deep threat over the top. You have Chris Godwin, who's a fantastic, fantastic supporting character in that offense. But you're very weak at the running back position. Your tight ends, OJ Howard, Cameron Brake, great. What do you have in the backfield? This would give you a weapon at every single position and a major one at that. This could help out the Bucs offense tremendously. They have some good talent on the defensive side of the ball. The Bucs are not terrible. Le'Veon Bell takes them to the next level. I think he helps them really compete in the NFC South more so than they already have. They've shown that they can be a good team with Fitzmagic. Now, Jameis Winston hasn't ever performed to the level that Ryan Fitzpatrick did at the start of the season. But maybe with the addition of Le'Veon Bell, he has a check down. He doesn't have to lob the ball up every time. He has an option he can go to. He has something he can lean on. Le'Veon Bell makes the Bucks a much better team, as he makes every team on this list a much better team, in my opinion. And number one is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Eagles have Jay Ajayi. The Eagles have shown that Wendell Smallwood can be a decent player, right? Corey Clement has not been terrible with the Eagles, but again... None of these players are near the level of Le'Veon Bell. Jay Ajayi is closer. Jay Ajayi is uh, closer to a top 10 running back than he is to, you know, number 20 on the list. Le'Veon Bell is still top three, top two in my opinion. I think he's 
very close to number one. Todd Gurley's been playing amazingly for a number of years now. It's got to be Todd Gurley, especially with Le'Veon Bell out. But Le'Veon Bell is either 1A, 1B, number two, whatever you want to say. Le'Veon Bell is very close to the best running back in the league when he's actually on the field and not suspended or sitting out. Jay Ajayi has been great at times with the Dolphins and now with the Eagles. But what did the Eagles do last year? You're an okay team. You know, you're middling that you could be a big playoff team. You go out and you trade for Jay Ajayi. What does he do? He turns around your offense to help Carson Wentz reach new highs. And he helps the Eagles. And he is a big reason why the Philadelphia Eagles were holding up the Lombardi Trophy last year. He helps them win that Super Bowl in a huge way. Now, what do you do this year? Your starting running back goes down. Jay Ajayi goes down with an injury. He's out for some time. What do you do? You go out and you trade for one of the best running backs in the entire NFL. He turns your offense around that has been struggling a little bit without that run game to lean on. I know they just smashed my Giants. I get that. The Giants suck so much ass. It's all right. But Le'Veon Bell helps this Eagles team. He gets them over the hump, back into the playoff hunt, back into the race, and back to being one of the best teams in the NFC that a lot of us thought the Eagles could be again this year. That's going to be my list, though, guys. Tell me what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think Le'Veon Bell gets traded? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And hopefully I'm better spoken in the next video. I don't know. This is way too long. Take it easy.